Welcome to the Daily Telegraph NRL podcast trial edition. Five <laughs> months and the footy's back. Is that, is that for us or? Yeah, good question. Or maybe for us. Well, I've had a couple of hit outs this year. I'm in, mm. I'm in reasonable shape. Listen, I'm just toying with combinations. <laughs> <that> works well. <laughs> Sitting, I, I sitting on the right edge this week. I yeah. was left edge last week. Versatility is yeah. key. Yeah. Rothfield yeah. was load management issue. Yes. Um, mm. Reed, Could be an issue throughout the season. Reed had a little bit of technical issues at the start of the week, mm-hmm. so he's got to go back and do a bit of fitness work. So yep. Michael Carianis, Russell Jackson on deck. Um, I know trials mean nothing and the scores mean nothing. And the scores mean nothing. There's a lot of different ways that teams approach it. Yeah. Some have got full strength sides, others have got really young teams, but I'm excited to see some footy back. Yeah, it'd be good. Um, you know, obviously the results are, are meaningless, but you can get a glimpse of um, future stars or, you know, like tonight, Ryan Pappenhausen in action. Mm-hmm. Right, all you need to see is one thing for Ryan Pappenhausen and everyone will be happy. Yep. You know, uh, or to get through the game unscathed. Just get through the game unscathed and, um, you know, that's probably number one, get through the game unscathed and then build into um, week one. So there are some takeaways from the trials um you know i don't read too much into results but as you said it's about combinations yeah, on earth and some right. players and yeah. mm. you know for the dogs as well so you know how does blake taft go at, at fullback how does the halved combination of matt bird and mm. andrew hutchinson go so these mm. are all important um mm. outcomes for all those sides regardless of of the result um you know these sort of players need to show something to ensure that um they're locked in for round one and so we've seen, you've just mentioned Blake Taft gets first shot at fullback. Uh, Drew Hutchison at seven, which is interesting, and yep. Burton retains the six. Mm. So you think, oh, this is an insight into what Cam is going to do. I've got no idea what he's going to do, even after naming this squad. No, that's, that's what makes it, it does make it so exciting this time of year. New combinations, new faces, all that. Yeah, the Canterbury situation is fascinating. Uh, happy for Drew Hutchison and he's got this crack. Uh, I, I've, I've got him ahead of Toby Sexton as a, as a number seven. Um, Can you qualify this um, Drew Hutchison loving? Yeah. Well, no, it's not Drew Hutchison loving. Like, um, I just I, seven is his spot. Like for so long, he he was. They tried to turn him into this Mitchell Orbison character that that he wasn't player that he wasn't. Um, seeing him lining up in the centres and things like that. Mm. Um, I mean, probably could the Roosters could argue that was because of necessity and injuries, whatever. But I, I'm excited to see him get a get a crack at seven. Yeah, he's probably not. He's not the long term option or anything, but. Yeah, look forward to seeing how he uh, how he goes. I'm very excited to see how Bronson Cherry goes. Yeah, mm. yeah. There's lots of intriguing stories, and I think the first game is probably where a lot of the attention is because of Pappenhausen number one mm. for, for the Storm, and then on the flip side, Taff and all the combinations we mm. spoke of in the halves, and yep. Bronson Cherry playing. You yeah. know, he obviously looks fit. Um, hasn't played since 2019, a long time away, but he's young. Mm. Um, yep. We'll see if he's retained his, his speed and the physicality um, of the game. But, yeah, that, that is really interesting. Um, of all the trial games, yep. I think the first one opens up probably the, the more intrigue than, yep. than the rest of them. 100%. Steve Crichton is a fullback, is that... Is I, that, it's not going to happen. Not going to happen? No chance? No. Oh, there's a chance if they yeah. start one and three. This is my yeah. issue with Canterbury. Yep. And this is my issue when you buy mm. lots of players that aren't set in, in positions, and we see it all the time. Their squad is so much better than it was last year. Their depth is so much better. Um, and, you know, if Blake Taft works at fullback, then you, you've got centre combination of what Crichton and Connor Tracy, Crichton and, and Sherry, whatever the case may be, and Kira as an Addo Carr in the wing. It's an awesome back line. Mm. You know, so it's a really good back line. But the, the concern is when you have all these players that play in multiple positions, if, they don't, if it doesn't work out initially... Do they blow up what they've done in the preseason after four or five games and then start again? <laughs> the Jack Bird effect. What is he playing? You know, we've, that, that is my only concern. But if it works, oh, I think that their back line um, looks really good. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Their outside backs look really good. Obviously, question marks around the halves and their middles got a lot to be desired, right? But mm. their, their one to five um, can mix it with the best in the competition. Yeah. Uh, Melbourne obviously need middles. Mm. They need forwards. They've got Sean Bloors joined the club. Um, Russ... Young guy Angus Hinchy gets his crack off the bench, uh, referred to as a Victor Radley type player. So, so um, he likes to spend time in the sin bin. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Victor. Oh, uh, no, geez. I, I'm a Radley fan. You know that. Um, that's great for Melbourne. I'd be excited if I was a Melbourne fan and I heard they had a. a well, he loves Victor Radley, doesn't he? Mm. His, his kid. So um, nothing wrong with that. 
Um, look forward to some big hits and some uh, some craziness. Something yep. else to look forward to in this game. Yeah. What about Parramatta play Canberra and Brad Arthur has named Ethan Sanders yeah. against the Raiders, yeah, the team he's expected that. to join after that. Mm. What are we, round six? For yeah, the deadline there. yeah. He's, you reckon BA is just dangling Matt, in front of Ricky and going, come and get him? Because, look, Parramatta fans are up in arms. They want to keep the kid, but yeah. mm-hmm. he's, he's only a seven. And I don't say only is in a bad thing, but... He's a seven, yeah. and if you're not playing seven, he's not a 14, mm. you know. Um, Josh Lynn, another good young kid coming through, is a Queenslander. He's a bigger body. He could maybe yep. fill into that 14 spot in that books, but yeah. if you're either a seven or you're languishing in reserve grade, and I don't know if that's the best thing for Ethan Sanders going forward, but, you know, Parramatta, for years, uh, the knock on him has been you're losing good junior talent, mm. So, and that's what this has been seen as, but... What it's do you all, do, well, it's impossible. If you've got Mitch Moses and, and Dylan yeah. Brown in your halves, yeah. who've just signed long-term deals, mm. and well, you're going to have to pay a bit of money to keep this. Kid. What do you do? So you can't, yeah. uh, you know. And I hate saying you can't keep them all. Like that, that's a, <laughs> an annoying phrase. But in this instance, when you've got two established halves in front of you, Kiwi half, New South Wales. Obviously, clear he's a premier half in New mm. South Wales. But yeah. Mitch is is next in the, in terms of number seven in New South Wales. So. Are you moving them on for a kid? No. I don't know. Only if you see, only if you think that he's going to be a ten-year player and you bite the bullet. Yeah. But with a coach under pressure mm. um, that needs to start the season well and win now, mm. are you going to back a kid over an established star? Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. So, if I'm a Parramatta fan, it's just frustrating. Yeah. But yeah. It, it's one of those things where I don't think the club can do much about it. Yeah. And uh, KO weeks for the Raiders at five eight, which is really interesting. Mm. I don't like it. Uh, I said here last week, and Buzz got very defensive because I, I managed to sledge the Raiders. <laughs> the more I look at the Raiders line up, mm. the more I think they're a bottom four side. Yeah. And yeah. Ooh. and that's and falling and falling. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, right. And uh, Chevy Chase Stewart uh, at fullback, so mm. the young former. Shark, yeah, it's exciting because he yeah, he kept He's Xavier Savage on the wing in reserve grade there's, last year. There's wraps on him, mm-hmm. and he will be their long-term fullback whether he starts the year or not. I think Seb Chris has got a suspension, so mm. they've got uh, a spot there, the Raiders. But he will be their long-term fullback okay. at some stage this year. Yeah. He he plays number one for the Raiders. But when you've got that in your fullback, the halves combination does, and then the hooker mm. does not much for me. No. Papa Leahy's on the decline. Their strength is still their four pack is still elite. Mm. Yeah. 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 But outside of that, uh, I'm not a huge rap on, on where the Raiders are mm. headed this year. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. So you what? Oh, we might have to cut that little bit of the uh, We've got to get pre-approval out, from so. all the Raiders fans oh, in yeah. the office before. <laughs> yeah, Raiders exactly. fans or Ricky fans? Ricky fans. Well, it, well, it's the same thing. It'd Both. be like LeBron James yeah, if, if he took his talents to... <laughs> If he took his talents to say North Queensland, I'm sure they'd all migrate yeah. with him up there. With yeah, the Stewart, so. I just think uh, I think they overachieved last year at Canberra. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. They, they had a, a, an outstanding. Yeah, they did. Uh, yeah, they did. you know, and sh- could have been Newcastle as well in, mm. in the in the finals. So, uh, well, you saw that tie rope last year because they didn't basically didn't win a game yeah. by more than twelve. Yeah, mm. and that four and against was yeah. You know. And I, I just they haven't added much. Morgan Smith is obviously I, I haven't seen a lot of him. But he is part of that strong forward pack. So their forward pack is not the issue. Mm. Mm. Um, it's just whether they can score enough. Po- I just don't know if they've got points in them. Yeah. At least they haven't panicked and gone out and tried to buy some, uh, uh, overpay for someone. Not that there was anyone on the bloody market. Yeah. You know, mm. Because of the way the situation is at the moment. But they've got that going for them. And, it, you know, if they make the A, it'll be a remarkable effort from Ricky. Mm. Coach of the year? Well, let's, yeah. let's <laughs> calm down. But, okay. If, he, if they make the A... I may endorse that. Oh, right. Jeez, that's a big call early but on. But then you got a top wow. eight side from last year making the top eight. That's not really yeah. coach of the year status. Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> um, what do you reckon about Newcastle with their new recruits rolling out? Tommy Jenkins, Jed Cartwright, Jack Cogger, Will Price, mm. one, one half of the English duo, Kai yeah. Pierce paul skipping the opening mm. trial. I think there's a genuine um, showdown for the halves. Cogger, Hastings, and uh, Tyson Gamble. Yep. I think it's a, gen- it's a genuine shootout there for those um, spots. And if they're not starting, they'll drop out of the 17 because yep. Crossland and like I think Jaden Braley will be back to start yes. the year. Yep. So Braley, they may start him or start him off the bench to, to mm. build his minutes up. But regardless, mm. Crossland's that um, versatile player in that 17. He covers more position. Yeah, he'll be the 6-7 the, the back up in the 17, but he'll play 9-13. 
cross yeah. on, no doubt. So one of those players will be unlucky to be out of the the what starting side. What would you do in the halves? Would you would you go would you go Cogger Hastings? I'd probably Hastings. go Cogger Hastings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you um, play? I, I like what um. I like what uh, Tyson Gamble brings. I like that mongrel. Well, he's an energy got. player, right? Can he play? Can yeah. he come on as a, as a utility? Well, they, they could, but they're all behind. Like, yeah. Hastings can play in multiple positions, yeah. and, and he could as well, but yeah. they're all behind Crossland. Yeah. Mm. Crossland was elite at the yeah. back end of last year, and yeah. Braley walks back into that 17. Yeah, yeah. Whether or not yeah. he started in the opening weeks, mm. I'm not sure, mm. but eventually he'll start, yeah. play big minutes by the back end of the year, and Crossland will be that okay. utility. So they can't, they won't carry yeah. um, two of those players. Yeah. So I think they fall out. Um, Will Price is interesting, the, the young Englishman who mm. um, has done really well at training, but he'll start the year in reserve grade. Okay. Um, he's just a little bit raw, um, needs a bit of work, but he's super young, and they've seen glimpses of, wow, he's going to be a long-term okay. player. And it's interesting, he's probably best position's fullback, but they're not going to play him at fullback. So mm. he becomes a halves option long-term mm. for him. And then Kai Pierce poor who won't play, apparently he's brain in it. He, he, if he's fit, he'll start on an edge for him. Can I say the mm. Brent Reed training the house down? Yeah, you can. Joining, joining that club? But apparently he's brain in it. Okay. And um, they're really excited to unleash him at some stage throughout the year. He'll be If he's fit, he'll be in their 17 to start the season. Good. Tell you what, it's, been a, it's a remarkable turnaround for the Knights, isn't it, the last few years? Because you've gone from a team that was so poor uh, and uh, post-Tinkler era, yeah. struggled, went through coaches... Um, and we'll get, we're going to get to this earlier, but I'll move it up the batting order. Adam O'Brien was on the chopping block last year, just been rewarded with an extended Dead man deal. Dead walking last yeah. year. Wasn't he? He was gone. What does like, that do for the club, do you think? O'Brien's future is secured. He doesn't have to worry about that yeah. stuff. Not on edge anymore. Well, he's made like, four, four, finals, three, three, of, three of the four years that he's been there. Yeah. yeah. And, and last year was a really, like, a remarkable run, yeah. right? Like, he, yeah. they went into those two games against the Tigers and Dogs uh, with a bye in between. And, and if he lost one... Mm. Good chance he was gone. Yeah. If he lost both, he wasn't finishing the year. Mm. But we saw the way they finished the year. Now yeah. he's got a, a two-year extension um, where if he finishes that, he'll be the most capped coach in Newcastle history. Hmm. Remark- <laughs> it, it, it's <laughs> incredible. <laughs> it's remarkable to really think is. that yep. um, only one coach, uh, Michael Hagen, has coached 100 games at the Knights. <laughs> wow. I think Mal really is on, was, is on 98. Mm. And Adam must be on like 96 or 95 or whatever the case may be. So he'll go past Mal Reilly early in the season. And Mal Reilly and Michael Hagen, only two premiership winning coaches for the night. So Mm. they believe that he can win them comp. Otherwise, he would have been out the door. Yeah. Um, But we saw the way Caelan Ponga played last year. If Caelan Ponga can get to that with these other pieces. And we saw the Safidis grow, Bradman Best grow, Phoenix Crossland grow. You throw in Kai Pierce Paul, Frizzell's still at the top. Leo Thompson. One mm. of the most improved players. Is his brother coming across? He, he's come, yeah. He's, oh, he's signed, but... 25? I think or it's... Yeah, it's definitely 25, and he might be there at some stage this year. I'm not sure Depending on the super rugby, rugby commitments, mm. but he's definitely there. Um, his twin brother, who's yeah. um, been on the cusp of playing for the All Blacks, yeah. um, will be there next year. So, um, yeah, I, I, I've definitely got the Knights in my, in my top eight. But Adam O'Brien, future settled, and if he sees out the deal... Most cap coach in history is a mm. remarkable turnaround. Yeah. And look, we love everyone for listening into the podcast. There's so many choices of out there of league stuff you can listen to, so we're really happy you chose us. But that little section was just for Mark, Mark. Who, who sent us an email overnight yes. saying, you don't talk about Newcastle, why not? And yes. Rather than me say, well, I'm still holding grudges from 2001 with Billy <laughs> Peden looking like a young Jason Tamalolo <laughs> charging over yeah. the line to knock over Para or... Tell him to go what, listen to some old Tui's News podcast with the great Barry <laughs> yeah. Tui. Um, they're, they're a good story, the Knights. There's, and last season, yeah, that crowd up there, they, they were getting great crowds and they yeah. weren't playing great footy. And so yeah. when, they, when things started to kick off, those games when you're seeing Dom Young running down the sideline and yeah, that so massive right. grandstand and of fans just who erupting. Who's this year, though? Who, who's... Was uh, Tom Jenkins that yeah, guy? Or Anari Tuala. Okay. Mm. Yeah. I think Anari's probably got his nose in front, yeah. I'd say. Okay. Um, if I had to mm. pick a team pre-trials, I think he's probably just in okay. front. Yeah, okay. And, and has had the runs on the board previously, you know? Um, yeah. Lost his place, but yeah. now he can do a um, job. Christian Ma- Malapalangi, I think. I've, I've, yeah. I've butchered that. I apologise. But they, they reckon he's... Growing. He's been coming along yeah. for a couple of years now, and hasn't the, he? they think he's ready for okay. um, for first grade as well. He's um, 
probably a centre, and mm-hmm. whether that or not he's enough to force Dan Gagai to the wing at some stage or not, yeah. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I've been practicing that name. I've butchered it. Do you want to mm-hmm. give it a go? Um, I'm gonna have to no. look it up because it's the Christian with a K, isn't it? K-R-Y-S. Yeah, yes, yeah. I've, I've Mapalangi, I think it is. Mapalangi. I think I think it's Mapalangi. Yeah. It's yeah. pretty good. We covered off on the nights there for our, our yeah, loyal listeners. Yeah, it's nice. So. Yeah, it's send us good. your feedback and yeah. we may ignore it. <laughs> Depending on how polite you put it, Mark was very polite. He was, and yeah. I, I hate that when teams that you know have traditionally been e- enemies of yours, and there's guy the fans are so nice. You go, oh god, makes them tough nice. to hate the Knights. But they, they, there was this so good to watch last year. They were so exciting. Yeah, their broken field play was amazing, um, and it's good mm. for the fans because they stuck solid. You know, and we always talk about the good old days with the Johns brothers and mm. and Bats and Chief yep. and Robbie O'Davis and all that. And yeah, you know, uh, they and that area needs success. So rather than calling for the demise of them and the uh, bringing back the Hunter Pirates or, or that's no, the, the, the Pirates, the Pirates were the NBL. They were the NBL team, weren't they? The Pirates. You're um, asking the wrong person. Yeah, sorry, basketball. The Hunter Pirates. How long did they last? Oh, not long. Never heard not of them. Not long. Hunter Pirates. Yeah, the Newcastle Did they last longer than the down. Mariners or less than... Yeah. No, oh, no they might have been a couple of years out, the Pirates, but yeah. Mm, okay. Bring back the Newcastle Falcons for the NBL as yeah, well. For sure. Mm. Yeah, for um, sure. Yeah. Spencer Lenu, the Roosters. So, what's going on there, Russ? We'd heard that he was playing... Well, we thought he was playing. We thought he was uh, was going to play on Saturday night uh, against, uh, against Manly, so... Um, We'll try to find out what's going on there. Mm. Good. Are you, be, are you be concerned? I'm not concerned. I just um, so he'll what? He's not playing in this game. He won't play in the second trial because I'll be yeah. in Vegas. So um, Vegas. So I don't know. Is he going to be too underdone to start? So not really. He's playing the footy. He's all right. He's yeah. training just, all right. Is there any issue? Are you talking, about, issue? Just, are you talking about playing or starting? Because no starting. I start like, starting. Oh. I am starting. Doesn't matter. And doing how many minutes? Playing how don't many know. minutes? They don't know. They got Jared there, Lindsay Collin. They'll be all right. Not in Vegas. Oh, not in Vegas. Obviously, mm. no Jared. Yeah, but, uh, but they'll be all right. Yeah, they'll work it out. Don't yeah. stress too much. Just move one of your seventeen superstar backs into the forward pack. There, oh, it Russ. could be the curse. No, of the blo- it, could be, like, it could be the curse of the blokes that went to Vegas. If he doesn't I'm looking play. forward to seeing mm. Nafahu White. I'm a big Nafahu White fan. He's running out uh, in the number eight jersey on uh, on Saturday night. I think he's a very good player. Uh, he's been involved in that New Zealand squad, and uh, yeah, watch him go this year. I think he could be. A pretty good part of that um, uh, prop rotation. Mm. Pretty when good. They do. It's a pretty good middle rotation when they're all fit. Yeah. Yeah. And if they go four props um, and just blast through the middle, which is what I'm hoping. Terrell May. Yeah. Yeah. May. I mean, Collins is, is a ridiculous player, isn't he? Um, yeah. Anyway. Oh, the but struggle. Spencer, I don't know. <laughs> mm. Let's find out. I don't like you being so excited in February for your team. That's no excuses this year. Plenty of pressure. They'll find some. Um, no, nah, that'll go good. I'll go, I'll go and win the comp. It'd be tough to beat. Yeah, so it'll be interesting how they work out everyone yeah. in, that, in that back line as well. Oh, yeah. Get Oops. them all in. What do you do? Um, but that forward rotation, and we haven't even mentioned, you know, Satili back. Hopefully yeah. Angus Crichton's, mm. you know, close yep. to, to what he we know he can produce. Yeah. Mm. Yep. The, Nat Butcher, Egan Butcher. Well, Brandon Wong. Smith better. Well, from one of our men Wong. at the you talk about training the house down. We did hear that Angus Crichton does fall under the yeah houses are being trained down. <laughs> no, it's a park. it's a crack inside. Yes, Teddy, why if, Angus Crichton is in very good shape. If, if Teddy can get you know mm. roll on and then Brandon can produce what we saw him produce yep. at the back end of last year. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Sam Walker, Kiri, mate. Mm. Congrats, Russ. Well done. Can, yeah, you. congrats on the trophy, mate. That's outstanding. Don't, don't worry about a Penrith four pick. How much would a premiership mean? I mean, I wouldn't know. It's been so long. <laughs> You've but, forgotten. But also to stop Penrith from winning a fourth. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> <laughs> Enough. Enough, Penrith. Please. Enough. Um, what else we got there? Let's have a look at... Um, Manly have only a sprinkling of their best talent in their side. But Josh Schuster. Yeah. Yeah. Lo- lots of intrigue around um, Schuster. Um, you know, was he going to play? Was he not going to play? Um, was he going to start? Is he going to start? I think Ben Trevojevic has got the the nose ahead of him to start it in round mm. one at, at the moment. Is um, he big enough, Ben Trevojevic, on that edge? Yeah, back row roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's quite lanky. Yeah, he's probably he's or he's, oh, he's bigger than Jake. He's probably not as tall as Tommy, but he's mm. probably thicker than Tommy. 
Um, so yeah, no, no, he can play in a, an edge back row, no issues there whatsoever. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's an interesting watch, you'll start. Mm. Um, he needs to play a, a fair bit of minutes, I think, to convince Manly that he'll be all right to to he'll go on the plane to Vegas, but to play in round one for him, maybe a bit off the bench. Yeah, okay. short stint. Mm. Um, Charity Shield's interesting because. Thought it was a big year for Zach Lomax. Needs to be more involved. Plenty of football, and he's named on the Sting. Yeah, what's doing? Um, yeah, very interesting. Very you, interesting there. That you're at the Dragon season launch. Yeah, I went, to, I went to that media did yesterday. You, and did you put your submission in for the board or anything while <laughs> you were there at the Leafs Club? Nah, I don't think that's appropriate. No my role. No, you can't. Buzz wants me to go on the board there. I know. He just well, wants me to just, leak him stuff. That's I'm, why I'm his proxy. That's why I'm just <laughs> pushing it on his behalf. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't think that's a, a right move. But no, it was good. The season launch last night. Matt Moran. Um, what, catered? Um, wow. Yeah, so it was good at the St. George Leagues Club. Bit of paella. Uh, sausage rolls. Uh, some lamb skewers. Yeah, it was good. It was a good night. It was an a intimate crowd. And it was good to see the league club um, look fresh. Because it's been dilapidated for, for so long. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, there's some grand plans there for, for the Leagues Club. But... You know, there's a, the playing group, you know, it's obviously, you know, you don't read too much into these, but even doing their, their media yesterday, the playing group seem um, relaxed and comfortable with each other. Um, you know, and uh, you, you don't, you, you know, you, you've walked on eggshells sometimes at the Dragons over the last couple of years, but you didn't have to do that um, yesterday. So, mm. look, there, there's a decent vibe there. Shane Flanagan's named as close to full strength. Well, Full strength of every, anyone that's available is playing. Is playing. So yeah, no Jaime yeah. Sele, no Ray Fatalamarino, who have both um, got niggles and both. Uh, I spoke to both of them yesterday. They reckon they'll play in week two of the finals when they oh, finals, please. <laughs> week two of the trials, <laughs> where they play um, uh, the Tigers in Mudgee. Hmm, um, so, so they'll yeah. play. Um, but obviously the interest will be around Zach Lomax, as you mentioned, and mm. Ben Hahn and Kyle Flanagan combination. Mm. Well, that's um, and so Jack Bird named in the centres. There was a funny quip last night where um, uh, Ben Hunt was on stage with Shane Flanagan being interviewed by Lara Pitt, and um, oh, I was like, oh, uh, how how is it having the the coach's son as the halves partner? Mm-hmm. And Ben Hunt's like, oh, he gets preferential treatment, and Shane's like, no, he doesn't. And Ben Hunt's like, no, he doesn't. But Jack Bird does, <laughs> and Shane said nothing. <laughs> so obviously, obviously, Jack Bird's one of his boys. Um, so they, uh, Flano was like, "No, Kyle does not get." He was adamant, "No, no." And Ben's like, "No, no, he does, and he trains hard, whatever." But Jack Bird and, and Shane was like, well, "Yeah, I guess so." Uh, but Jack That's Bird, cool. you know, who's looking, looking like he's lost some weight and looking, and has grown as leader. Even his presence in the room last night, mingling with people and. Um, Introducing himself, and you know how sometimes you go to these events and the players sort of yeah. hide in the corner, and they don't. Blake Laurie. Oh, really? He's lost that puppy fat that that he's had. He looks great. Yeah, and he had a, he he was one of the shining lights for the Dragons mm. last year. But I thought, um, yeah, yeah, he looks he looks in, in great nick, and you know asserted himself in the room yesterday as well. Has he done his annual Fletch and Hindy sit down with him? Did he tell you that? Did he mention that at no. all? No. No, with Zach. Yeah. Uh, I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't seen that. I don't know if they can do a Flano impression as well as they did <laughs> the, the Hook impression. I can't, I'm not even going to... I like, I like Hook, so I won't be doing that impression, but that was very, very funny. <laughs> I don't know how funny he found it, but... Um, yeah. It, I don't know. Can you do a Flano impersonation? It's very cranky, Flano. No, impossible. Yeah. He, he's... Depends. Is it is it coach's box Flano or is it... Commentary box flannel on on Fox. Nah, yes. you want the you want the coaches. I you like him as a commentator. I think he's pretty good. Yeah. You won't hear it for a no. few years. <laughs> well, hopefully not for him. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you never know with the dragons. Nah, he'd be right. <laughs> he will be all right. He will be all right. Um, Are you hearing good things from the dragons? Like as far as oh, happy camp and all that. Yeah, definitely yeah. happy. Happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yep. Super happy. Super um, trusting of the performance staff. Not sure that's been the case the last couple of years. So mm-hmm. they're getting flogged, but they're all right with getting flogged. There's, mm-hmm. a, there's a, a real scientific approach mm-hmm. to it rather than some of the old school ways that may yeah. have been in play. Interesting. Interesting you say. What are, you, are you alluding to anything in particular or? Nothing specifically. No, no. no. Not Just in, in general. Not uh, 
tell them to bring their running boots. Well, there, there, was a bit, there was definitely a bit of the old school, make them run, make them run, make them run. Mm -hmm. I think the, the training has, has changed a fair bit this year for them. So, mm. um, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 don't, I don't have high hopes for them in terms of where they're going to finish on the competition ladder. I think we'll see a better Dragon side, but um, they're definitely, definitely much happier than what I've seen there. What, what's years. a pass mark for, for Flanagan and the Dragons? What, what are Dragons fans, what oh. would they be, what would oh, they cop? Oh. Competitive, on Com the verge, showing signs of making the, the eight at some point? Oh, or? If they're on the verge, yeah. if, you, if we're sitting here in, in round 21, 22, yeah. and you say the Dragons can make the eight, if you're a Dragons fan, you're taking that. Happy. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I don't think that can happen. Yeah. No. yeah. But, um, you know, I, I think anywhere from 12th mm -hmm. up, Yep. would be a good year for him. Yeah. And Just signs. Like, you want to say... Because it's a competitive and, and comp. And get a few big scalps along the way. 12th doesn't sound yeah, great, yeah. but yeah. it's a competitive well, comp. 12th could be Tough four comp. points yeah, out of the yeah, eight, yeah, yeah. which is yeah. not... You know, there's yeah. two wins, obviously. So, because you, you look at last year, the teams that missed out, mm. South yeah. should have been the eight. Mm. Parramatta yeah. grand finals to out of the eight. Yeah, you know, yeah. There, there's there's some good teams. Manly, Manly. North Queensland. Yeah. 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 That, so there's there's your twelve there. Yeah. So if mm. you're finishing in that yeah. twelve, then I said know. last week for mine, it's going to be the improvement of players. Mm -hmm. Sloan, yeah. Lomax, Suli, Sua. These guys will have shown that they can be really good first graders, yeah. Yeah. but just can't, haven't been able to put it together for whatever reason. Provided they can do that then I think they're going to have a good year. Well, while we're on Dragons, what's the latest with Luciano Le Lua? Yeah, it's uh, news broke what, a couple of days ago mm. now that he requested an immediate release um, to, to leave the Dragons. Leave, uh, the Cowboys. Uh, leave the Cowboys. sorry. And obviously, looks like he's played his last game at, at North Queensland. He's got two years left to run on a mega deal there. Mm -hmm. um, his agent met with the Dragons yesterday afternoon. Um, no deals done. The Dragons haven't put an offer to him yet. Uh, they'll take him for the right price. Mm. They'll take him. And, you know, he's a St. George Junior. Um, I think he wants to return to Sydney. There's probably a bit of interest from one or two other clubs. Um, I don't think the drag the Dragons aren't going to break the bank for him, though. Um, they'll have a price in mind, whatever, the, the, whatever that may be. And if Layla wants to come for that price, they'll, they'll mm. sign him immediately mm. for mm. two to th probably three years. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, I'd yep. say, and I think it'd be... I think at a, at a decent price, I think he's a great signing for him. Yeah, and I think talent-wise, he adds to their roster. That's, big time. That's what you're looking at. Big time, yeah, big time. Does. Because yeah. it, it, suddenly, if you've got Sua, um, Leilua, Suli, Bird, mm -hmm. Lomax, Ravawala, yeah. there's some strike on your edge. Mm. He's a game-breaker, isn't he? You know? Yeah. So, yeah. at his best, yeah. he's amongst the damaging players yeah. in the competition, but... You know, he hasn't been at his best for too long. Yeah. That's the issue. And, and I don't want to say he was a bad signing for North Queensland because that, that's not what I mean by any stretch. But it was a confusing one given all the young mm. back rowers yeah. there and yeah. the position that he was taking. And this might actually help, or obviously it will help them, try and retain Helam Luki or mm. Kulikefu yep. Fini, Fu, Fini Fuiaki. Did I get yeah, that one right? Is that one better for yeah, me? I think so. It's... Um, but the Dragons are in for both of those two. Mm. And I don't think their Le Lua signing would change that. Okay. So I think if they sign Le Lua, they'd still have enough cash to, to land one of those young Cowboys. Mm. Um, but you'd say if Le Lua goes, he, they're staying. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's... that's yeah. You'd think. Um, but yeah, I thought, always thought that was a strange decision. And whether that was that win now mentality but still two years to go and they'll probably have to carry some of that freight of Leilua now if he's to leave but well maybe not do they do they need him to go they probably do to keep those young guys so yeah it's where your player managers and your heads of footy make their money yeah, so yeah, yeah. going to be very interesting so um, look I want to move on because Russ we had a chat about this this morning mm. and the NRL loves a rule change mm -hmm. and it's only brought one rule change in this season yep. and as usual it's causing drama because um, the NRL uh, yes they released a video where head of football Graham Annesley was going through talking about it's the kick rule change uh, it's um, it's about contested mm -hmm. kicks contested yep. kicks from dropouts mm -hmm. and from uh, from all well, from restarts mm -hmm. dropouts halfway mm. um, and so as Annesley said yesterday, if a contested kick goes over the touchline on the mm -hmm. full or fails to travel the required 10 metres, mm. play will restart with a play the ball from the 10 metre line 10 metres in from touch. 
Um, same with halfway. If you do, if you kick off from halfway mm. and it's a contested kick, mm. it won't be a penalty yep. at halfway. It'll be a tap 60 metres out yep. for the for the opposing team. But the kicks must be capable of being contested in the opinion of the referee. Otherwise, all existing rules will apply. Mm. Um, however, <laughs> Yes. Well, we we saw two examples on the videos that they posted. A Reese Walsh dropout that was shot along the ground. Mm. It didn't go 10 metres and he went into touch. Yep. Uh, went into touch before the 10-metre line. So, but that, under this new rule, is deemed contestable and given a 10-metre restart. It's not, no, it's not how, a penalty. No, it be contestable. It hasn't gone 10 metres. Yeah, so. you cannot <laughs> physically contest it because you will give away a penalty. Yep. If you dive on that ball before yep. it goes 10... It is a penalty, so it's not contestable. It is not contestable. It, it fails rule one of the new interpretation. Can you save it for uh, the Monday bunker show or your, your Monday oh, podcast? Why? Just, we'll, we'll, we'll get through this weekend. But we're going to see it this weekend know, and everyone's going to go, oh, well, yeah, that's what he was talking about. You might think I'm a dope now, but <laughs> you're going to see it on the weekend and go, oh, you know what? He was right. But well, let's see. I, I don't get it. It, it no. annoys me. And I'm, I'm usually, okay, we'll give things a try. I don't often get fired up about too much I'm you know but it rewards mediocrity it does Nathan it does. Cleary Adam Reynolds all the sharpshooters who have been plying their trade for now exactly it's, it's like widening the hoop in a basketball game that's right uh, you know I oh well the three pointers are such a good yep. thing Steph Curry's revolutionized the game let's make the rim this much wider that's so right. everyone can everybody get a shot wins. in everybody wins everybody oh. wins yeah I feel sorry for those guys who are really good at it um, everyone's just going to get up and have a blast now and if, as long as it goes somewhere near the 10 metre line then you're okay, don't worry about they it They to stop time wasting, right? The potential for time wasting, that's yeah. why they're, they're going to award the penalty for the um, things they deem not, not deliberate yeah. Deliberate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So time wasting yeah. Well I think if there's 3 seconds left on the clock or whatever yep. um, and you're down by 1 or 2 mm. or whatever the case may be uh, yeah. the circumstances, so now you can get a penalty so you can attempt a kick for goal I don't know. Well, it was... He I'm said... I'm not that fast on it. And as Lee said, um, the excitement of contested kicks. Yeah. But excitement comes from risk. It's the roll if of you, the dice that makes yeah, it exciting. That's yeah, that's what it is. Right. You take away the risk. Yeah. If, you know, yeah. the excitement of tightrope walking without mm. a net. Well, if you've got the net there, it's fine because you're just going to fall in. I'm yeah. saving my outrage. Saving your outrage. Oh. But maybe tomorrow morning I might be blowing up. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. exactly. I'm, just, I'm just saving it. We'll see. Mm. Let's see. Then we can blow up. All right. Well, what do you reckon? No, I've already gone. You're gone. Oh, yeah, oh, you're, you're, you're well you, can't, you should be punished for a dud kick. Yeah. Can't put the cork back in the punished. champagne like bottle, mate. You don't get rewarded for one. Yeah, a penalty on a halfway kick for touch. All of a sudden, the team's on the back foot. Like yeah. Two points in front of the sticks. You take those yeah. all day. But it, the kickoffs from halfway. Mm. So all yeah, of a sudden, I'm not sure why the kickoff. It's a penalty. Mm. Yeah. If if in old oh, yeah. old olden days, last season. If you kick out on the full or don't make the 10, right. you get a penalty against you. They kick downfield. Yeah. 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 Now yeah. they're 60 out with a yeah. set of six. Happy days. Yeah, that's right. You get a penalty. Wind at your back. Cherry Evans launches one. Kick oh. for touch. All of a sudden, it's, it's, it's a big thing. That's a, a punishment for a bad kick. Anyway, look yeah. forward to watching that unfold in the uh, in the trials. Kick yeah. gloves. That's what we need in here. Mm. Get rewarded for mediocrity. That's right. No, well, exactly. that's it. <laughs> All right. Eight. Hey, those place ribbons get into ninth now, don't they? <laughs> no, nah, non-competitive rugby league anymore on the junior no, level. How oh, yeah. Is that? Yeah. Honestly, don't get me started on that. Well, let's get him started. Fire I've him just up. wound up. Yeah, come on. No, I don't, just stop. I don't agree with yep. kids having to wait to 13 to play grand finals. Yeah, 13 to lose. 13. 13. To lose. Well, I never won one. I lost. Don't worry. It's not. I'm not sitting here from a place of having celebrated <laughs> my trophy cabinet's not full. I'll give you the tip. So, but oh, 13 is too long. I, th- I think 13. I can understand. I can understand the. I can understand six, six seven, and eight. sevens, all that. That's fine. Well, when I when I played, I think we had we had grand finals from sevens, right? Yeah. And then it, when yeah. I coached, it got moved to nines. And yeah. my first year of coaching was under nines. So these kids were in their fourth. Most of them were in their fourth season. They were ready for finals. Mm. Yeah. They know what finals are about. And. Yeah. It's not so much about winning. Right, everyone thinks I'm a, like, it's not so much about winning and losing, right? Mm. It, it's it's about the dynamic of club spirit, supporting other clubs, yeah. having a sense of occasion, going mm. to Cogra Oval yeah. on Grand Final yeah. day, yeah. Yeah. living out your dream of playing at, at Cogra Oval. Yeah. Your kids, you, you know, other teams are there, even if they're not playing, mm. they're there supporting. So, um, there's a great club feel. There's that camaraderie, which mm. will be lost. I don't care what anyone says. It's going yeah. to be lost if they're playing the last game of the season. And there's no finals. No one cares. Yeah. You know, it, it's a sense of occasion. It's important. Mm. I, I thought it was a great 
team building, team spirit, club culture, yep. all this sort of stuff. Yes, the result was cool too, to win mm. or lose, whatever the case may be. Mm. But then you'd go back to the club and the parents would have a few drinks and the kids, well, you know what we're doing? Well, they're playing footy. Yeah. Mm. Win or loss, mm. you're still playing. How you're quickly would you get over it? You go, oh, okay, it's such oh, a no, loss no. and you're going to No, no, I'm, I'm not over it. Oh, really? No, nah, under 11's grand final, got pumped by 50. Oh. Charlie Liano ran over top of us to tell you they are. No good. Okay. How did you make the grand final? We won 7-0 <laughs> against Picos, one of the great games. Picos are now defunct. Sorry, guys. Another pod in this. <coughs> there is, breakaway, isn't there? A breakaway pod. Oh, no, yeah. What we lose then? Breakaway league. That's what, uh, mm. no, I'm, I'm so off it. I think it's embarrassing. The fact that we're not going to have grand finals until they're 13. Mm. And so what happens now with... Uh, those associations who have well, there's one up. association at the moment. So mm. St George um, agreed, and we'll do it in the column that they're going to reluctantly adhere to it. So South are having a little bit of resistance because mm. what they want New South, well the NRL, it's an NRL enforcement. Mm. Um, for this year, it's going to be under tens, no mm. grand finals. Mm. Next year, under elevens, no grand finals. The following year, under twelves. Yep. South want to yep. have under nines grand finals this year. Whether or not that's going to wash, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, MacArthur's the only one, and they're looking at legal options to ensure mm-hmm. their players independently um, and the like. So good on MacArthur for standing up because it's mm-hmm. not a popular decision in their district. I can't, I can't see. I know people point to oh, it's mm-hmm. worked in Queensland or whatever the case may be, but I think some of the numbers are fudged by the fact that um, numbers were down during COVID, yeah. mm-hmm. um, and, mm-hmm. and the year after COVID, women obviously playing now uh, as well. Um, what, are they, what are they saying it works? What are the metrics for it works? More players say. I, I think there is an issue in, in junior league of the fact of retention. Yeah. Uh, when, when players get to a certain age. But I think that's a lot across a, a lot of sports. And um, But if you get players in at 6, 7, 8, even if they're not playing at 15, generally speaking, they're still fans of rugby league. Mm. Generally speaking. Yeah. If you play the sport, it generally converts to you following a team. Of course. And that's what you want. Uh, you know, it, it is hard for 15, 15 16 year olds. Things mm-hmm. change, right? You, firstly, mm-hmm. you make decisions for yourself generally at that age, too, yep. right? So you can yep. say to your parents, no, I don't want to play. You can mm-hmm. say that at 10, too, but you're not driven as much by y- 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 the guidance of your parents. Yeah. There's other sports that, that opens up. There's school mm, that of course. takes um, precedence for, for some people. There's injuries. There's all this sort of stuff that, that play into it. But I just think if we're getting to 13 and you haven't tasted what it feels like to win or lose or build towards something work towards a goal i think we're robbing kids of those memories that i still have take for example when i was coaching right um we had uh, elena had to go to hospital oh two weeks ago right we walk in that's my my baby walk in and there's a kid that who's in there he's not a kid anymore he's like 27 28 with his baby i coached him last time i saw him was like 10s (laughs) <laughs> you know the first thing he talks about? The grand final. The we won mm. another tenth. Nice. That's great. There you go. But they're the memories, you know, even playing soccer, those gala days were terrific. You'd yeah. play three or so, three yeah. or four games in a day. Yeah. And if your scores was ended, uh, scores were tight at full time, it'd be mm. a camp back on corners or goal kicks or throw ins. And That sounds terrible. Yeah. Oh, hey, there was. Corners and goal yeah. kicks to oh, side. Really everyone's, nice. everyone's talking, don't kick it out for a corner, oh, mate. Lord, you know, geez, it's. Geez. But, probably there's a better system. But mm. the competition. Yeah, yeah. It's competition. Yeah. Yeah. And you win, you lose. Yeah, you but fun, you do it together. At the end of the day, you get back to the club and you mm. celebrate other clubs other clubs' results, win and yeah. losses. That's not going to happen. No, no, that's right. No. Do we give uh, those every, kids playing for the bigger trophy means a lot too? <laughs> no, no, stop giving best and fairest awards for te- for players Probably. and teams now. Probably. I don't know where, where does it end. Do we not yeah. have school captains at primary mm. school. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, what, what's, what's, what's the go? Mm. Explain that to me, Mobsy. Oh, I got nothing for you. Nah, I'm. I'm going to save my outrage laugh for this weekend's trials. I love yeah, competition. <laughs> Ready to go. <laughs> lose. Ready. Mm. So there you go. That's my rant. I oh, know. Well, why don't we go from rant to listener questions? Because we've got a couple here. Mm. All right, this one's for you, Mobsy, I reckon. I'm a para fan commenting on the Brad Arthur criticism. Mm. This from Pete. Hypothetically, would you rather support a team that misses the top eight most years but magically wins a comp every 15 years or support a team that rin- rin- wins the majority of games, finishes top four, but no premiership? So I guess, all right, so this is the, the way to look at it, right? So Parramatta, 1986, good work. Um, not much since so then. So condescending. But, you know, <laughs> finals, plenty of finals in the last decade, right? Well, last or, six or seven years, or yeah. Do, and then, or do you go on the flip side, Dragons, West Tigers, Tigers, Bulldogs, yeah. Yeah. Newcastle, 
you know, yeah. who have won a, a premiership mm. this millennium. Yeah. Uh, what What would you rather? Well, that's the thing. You look what I'd much rather what Brad Arthur's done to Parramatta at the moment mm. than you know? West Tigers. Yeah. Oh, but nah. but even oh mate the the nah. the years the years of mediocrity getting to the point where now consistently playing finals football apart from last year the Tigers haven't played finals football in 12 years yeah I know I get that but and you'd, sti- you'd still take that mm, then a finishing the top four and yeah. what beat Parramatta two years ago was a once in a lifetime team I mean 2001 is a different case should have won that one 2009 they were cheats so should have <laughs> had two titles but yep. these are the things that happened but you, you can't tell me you'd rather be a Tigers fan I'd rather it depends how old I am if I'm my age and would have seen 05 yep. yes yes Oof. For sure, yeah. Premiership to, to, have, to have won a premiership, to have yeah. tasted success, yeah. So for the bloke who's fighting for kids to play finals football, uh, you're now saying eh, I don't really need it as well, a, I want a comp as 10 a fan. Years ago. Don't worry about it. Twenty <laughs> years ago, yeah, that's right. Uh, no, no, I, I think you're in it to win premierships. Exactly. And, yeah. and and further to that, yeah. if you think Brad Arthur's not the guy, who else is there? <laughs> Who's out there? I, I don't know. I haven't gone. We'll, we'll go. Wayne down, Bennett. We, Wayne Bennett, for sure. We may go down that path. Wayne Bennett stage, Eels. But, um, He's staying at Brisbane, isn't he? There's a lot of good assistant coaches in the NRL at the moment. Mm. You know, you got Dean Young, Ben Hornby, mm. Blake Green, Josh Hannay, all these guys mm. who mm. just, mm. I, I, you know, yep. give someone a crack. Give you someone know? a crack. I wouldn't be re- uh, Wayne would be the only one that I'd, that's yeah, doesn't that's have a job for next year at the moment mm. that I would recycle in a sense yes. there's yeah. no one else that I, that I would uh, no. outside of those no, guys. not if you're looking for John a Morris there's some guys there that yeah. deserve a, a, a crack so that's what I'd be looking at if I was power mm. not yet but potentially in terms of all right. Crocker is PNG actually able to support a full time NRL team full time as in living breathing immersing yourself uh, in yeah. PNG because there's no intention of having them full time no, but no, no to, to answer there. the question no no, I don't think they. Well, they won't be. Ba- they, no. Well, they they can, mm. right? I think mm. the point they they will be one of the you know if we were breaking down in terms of sponsorship dollars and stuff, mm. they'll be top five in the NRL. Yeah. I think metric wise. Yep. Um, they own their stadium. Mm. Um, so that if it wasn't in Port Moresby, they could, right? Mm, exactly. But they're not going. They're, they're not going to be based full time in Port Moresby. There's no appetite for that. Yeah. There's heaps of. There's a lot of reasons why that's not going to happen, right? Mm. But yes, they could, and yes, they could um, be financially viable mm. in Cairns, particularly if the government's going to tip in millions and millions of dollars. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Bloodski. Bloodski. Players, clubs do school community work for the good of the game. What do journos do? <laughs> <laughs> do you mentor, mentor future sports journalists or help, or help journos in the country or in the Pacific? Well, do you, have you seen Tyson Jackson on the podcast recently? That's yep. a little He's prodigy one coming through. One yeah, of the good ones. You yeah, know? We, we do. We work closely with news local journos. We cover all country footy and. I'll say uh, this: if anyone, whatnot, if so, anyone yeah. ever reaches out to me, I always get back to them. And if anyone wants to reach out from the country mm. or the Pacific or whatever the case may be, email me or tweet me or whatever the case may be. Mm and I'll always help you out. Mm. And there's always opportunities to come in and do a bit of work experience for those younger kids. Yep. Considering journalism as a career, you can come in and fetch me coffee and <laughs> get my lunch. That's what no, I still no. do. <laughs> and we've got some media friends in PNG too, haven't we? We do. So yeah, yeah. We love our media friends over there. So mm-hmm. what about, th- this is the this great is, Aaron oh, Wallace. This is, this, oh my is, God. this is for you two. Would you rather fight, a, this is Fox Sports Labs, Aaron Wallace, the guru oh behind all the God, numbers. Would this? you rather fight a pain sized Adam Reynolds <laughs> or two Adam reynolds sized? Oh wow! I am Adam Reynolds size, <laughs> so I'm just going to get the crap built out of me either way. Oh. So who are you fighting? <laughs> I'd take the pain half sized Adam Reynolds, but after watching his wrestle with Pat Carrigan, I'm in a lose lose situation. Yeah, no. I'm not what fighting. about you, Russ? I, it'd been an intriguing battle against the two, um, the two Adam Reynolds size pain halfs. It, it, it seems a bit, a bit tricky that one. They've got big engines. Yeah, they do. Mate, unless you, you can't finish them off early, you've, you've yeah. got to have endurance to have yeah. a, a long, drawn-out fight to, against yeah, two workhorses. To training to prepare for that. But Just um, one. W- mm. well, what about one pain half-sized Adam Reynolds? Well, that'd be easier. Well, just go for his knee. It's just how much you want to challenge yourself, really. Yeah. Like I don't know. You know it depends what sort of pre-season you've had. If you've been training the house down or anything like that, then I'm, I'll, I'll take know. the two. <laughs> I'll take the two. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what 
idea, get Wall mate. on the show one week. What have we... Yeah, maybe for a Monday episode. Get him in. Wow. Aren't you SEN colleagues? He does. Uh, oh, I'm colleagues with everyone. Oh, I know. Somewhere along the line. Who aren't you colleagues? Somewhere along the line. Yeah. ABC tomorrow night on Friday night. All stars. Back baby. All stars, yeah. And Latrell Mitchell is mm. captain for Latrell the All Mitchell. Stars. Mm. That's um, that's a good move. Very good. Yep. Very good. Yep. It's um, yeah, it's good. It's you know, I think mean, some of the, like there was a struggle to get some sides together. A lot of injuries, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Cody Walker, Jack. There's a lot of players missing, but um, mm. cool concept. Um, and um, yeah, Latrell gets that leadership role and, and hopefully you know um it one it's one that evolves uh, a, a little bit with him yeah yep right oh well that's us um, oh yeah we've got because oh. oh, we've got footy on tonight too well we still do oh, it buzz yeah. is the only one that eats dinner or anyone there's footy apparently <laughs> <laughs> otherwise we can't do dinner well, well, russ looks a bit nervous what are you making up no i'm not making anything tonight i'm actually getting a uh i've got a leave pass tonight so i'm going to the Ooh. to the pub wow. I'll, what? Be, I'll be having i'll be having a uh, a steak what? What Which do you mean? You're going so you to the pub? What is, what? What's going What's on here? A signing session? Uh, yeah. Is that? Is this dangerous? What are we doing here? Well, Ro- Robin, Hood, I, Robin Hood Hotel. Uh, uh, Robin Hood like Hotel you. up at um, Charing Cross. So. I only if they don't I'll like be, you. Uh, it's an issue. What do you? Be, what's yeah. it? How do you have your steak? Come and say hi. Medium rare rump pepper sauce. I think I'm going to go for. Ooh. What about you? Uh, my mother-in-law's cooking for us tonight. She's coming over. What's wrong? I've got a very heavily pregnant wife. Yeah. Little baby. Hmm. I'm. Slaving here, slaving here, slaving here. Okay. So I think I think she's cooking spaghetti bolognese. I think was what I was told. Oh really? I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Uh, Bolognese. Do you reckon bolognese is one of these ones where it's like, it is what you grew up with, like because it's such a staple of what you had at home Mm. that it's if if it's not like your home one, like your one your mum cooked or Mm. whatever the case may be, my grandmother, whatever the case may be, it's Mm. just a little bit different. Well, we've had to um, we have to pivot a little bit. Do you know how expensive salmon is at the moment? Yes. Yeah. The price has gone day, yeah. straight through yeah, the roof. Yeah, it's almost crackers. doubled in price. Yeah. So um, my um, air fryer yeah, has saved, it, gets oh, a reprieve. hasn't got to work out in ages. So <laughs> we've um, no. So we're just going to uh, we're just going to do a little bit of chicken Kiev tonight. Mm. So and some some salad because I'm I mean I'm training mm. the house down. We're going to oh, drop. Yeah. Well, oh, there I've, you go. I might have. Good. I might have done the opposite to Valence Tavare and put on a couple of kegs <laughs> over Christmas, whereas he dropped them off. So I'm that's the way to do it. Reverse yeah. Val. That's so, good. Yes, but um, enjoy your footy, everyone. I can't wait for this. So we'll drop yeah. in and say hi to Russ tonight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely. He wants in the eastern signing. suburbs there. He'll, he'll have his pen ready. I'll, sign. I'll be doing signings from uh, 7.30 till 8.31. And, <laughs> and leave me alone. <laughs> so yeah, enjoy footy. Bye.